So, uh, let's see, we'll just... Uh... Now, the other thing that this puzzle has, that other puzzle don't, like this, is a center. So this center represents beyond just the circle. The center actually represents the Megaminx center. So this really shows you that this is not a Kilominx that we're dealing with at all. This is, well, it's as much of a Kilominx as this is because this has a center also. So that's what we're dealing with. We are dealing with a circle Megaminx. Except the edge is not exactly buried because we see it at the side here. Okay, so the movement is actually really good. It's a little snaggy at times. Okay, solve this here, or scramble. Now what I notice is that when the puzzle is black and stickered like this, there's something very appealing how it all pops out at you. Two, three, turn, and turn. Now, now that we've talked about the strategy and the only new algorithm that this puzzle needs, I invite you before looking ahead and seeing spoilers Go ahead and give it a solve. Go ahead and give it a try. Make the mistakes. Go through the trials and tribulations. Go through the frustrations. And then uh, uh, get the satisfaction of having, having done it yourself. Okay. The good thing about this is it also helps to break it in as, I, as I'm scrambling it. Okay, so there it is. Now this is the first time I've scrambled this puzzle. So I'm going to hope that my strategy works. Just for the sake of perspective, I'll scramble this just because if it gets more difficult to follow, it may be, it may be illustrative to just sort of show how we're doing this on a circle Megaminx. Okay, the other thing to bear in mind too, with a circle Megaminx, these centerpieces are actually not the centers of the sides of a Megaminx, like this is. So these don't represent this. This actually represents a 12-sided dice, really. So this is like a one-by-one one Megaminx. That's, that's really what this is. It doesn't scramble, it doesn't go anywhere. It's exactly uh, stationary. This actually represents the center of each side. So when I turn this, that's like turning this. And each one is like one side of the five-sided center. Okay, this, on the other hand, this represents the same kind of thing, you can look at it as the center of a 12-sided um, one by one, basically. Or you can think of it as the center of the side. When I move this, this is one side, but I have to align this with where the one by one is. So all that would mean is the first part of the solve of a circle Megaminx is I simply take the centers, which are already here and don't get scrambled, and just line them up. So it's kind of like a, a trivial part of the solve. So just lining it up. Like so, and like so, and like this. So I'm just putting the centers oriented where they're supposed to be. It's literally like spinning this around until these colors match the colors on each side. So put this in over here, put this in over here, and put this in here. So this kind of gets us prepped to do this kind of a solve. So you can see whoop, our inner star is born. In this puzzle, uh, to start the solve, is we don't have such a thing. We don't have to turn this in order to make it make sense, which does make me wonder if we might end up with something of a parody because we don't have that um, uh, quick degree of correlation. Okay, so the first thing um, as part of the Megaminx solve is to put the edges in. Now, in this case, you're not going to see the edges. Again, don't look at these as the edges. Don't look at these as the edges. You've got to look at these guys as the edges. So these um, pieces here never moved from each other. But if I were to say start with a green, and you can see a green and blue, I would move that, uh, say, down here. And i got to make sure that I move the versions of the centers here. So this will move down. This green will match up to this green, and then we move it up. Okay, now it's not where it needs to be, so let's move this down, move this down to here, move this in, move this up. Okay, uh, so I'm actually not going to go through the details whoop, of the circle Megaming solved. This is just to get perspective. 
I have to assume knowledge, but anyway, so this is in. Let's move this back in over here. This is not where it should be, so I'm going to move it down to a layer. layer. Move it away from here. Move this back up. Here. So I'm going to take this, move it down. Put this into here, so I match with the green one here. Then I'm going to move it up. And now this is it. So I've got these two in here. Find the other green. Now, notice as I'm putting this in, these are automatically getting solved. So what's going to happen with this is I won't have this to guide me. I have to use these two. So just to demonstrate that again, let's find another green edge. Uh, let's see, dark green edge. Another one is right here. Okay, it's upside down from where it needs to be. So I'm just going to move this down to a layer where I'm free to move that. Move this green center back up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this here. I'm going to take this green, move it into this position so it matches just like this. And I'm going to move this up to here to where it matches here. Remember this is stationary, bring it up and boom. Now I'm going to take this and move this green center back. Now notice when I put this in, this is now solved and this is now solved. Um, we got two more to choose from. So I'm moving this and these two. Line it up here. Okay, same thing. We move this down. Match this to this same color over here. Then match this purple up to here. This one comes back. So now we have this. Uh, we have this cross. So this is in. This is in. So all these guys are in as well. So that's what we have to do with here. Uh, let's say we pick the green side. Now let's find the green side. Okay, so here's a green side over here. So just like we did with this, we have to put the equivalents of the edges, but it's going to be these. So the question is, how do I know which of these is the correct one? Well, I'll know because of the color here and here. So I want to find the two corner centers, corner circle centers, that match these colors over here. So this is a beige color. And this is a, what are you, is a, looks like a purple color. So I'm going to find a purple and beige to bring up to here. So let's find purple and beige. Uh, and it's not these wedge pieces, it's this. So nothing here. Here's a purple and here's a green. Beige and, ah, purple. So you see this over here, purple and beige. So we have to move this into position. So to visualize it, I'm going to pretend it's this edge. It's not this edge here, it's underneath that, but this is where they correlate with. So purple and beige. Uh, let's find where the, uh, that, that was supposed to be. And I think it's, it's here. So here's purple and here's beige, which means that, don't want to lose it, this so I visualize it like it's this edge. This area here needs to come up to here. So let's just go ahead and move this in position. Purple and beige. And we're going to go one, two. Now it doesn't look like we did much, oh, but it's upside down. So this should be purple over here. So I'm going to take this. And I just have to turn it upside down. This is just kind of done intuitively and move this into here. Okay, so what we see here is this is purple and this is beige, so this is in. This represents, say, you know, the first edge, but instead of seeing it, which you can't, you see it through here. This is in and this is in, and you can tell based on the center, so this is in and this is in. So we're going to continue to put them in all around the puzzle here. Yeah, there's one here that's just really stiff. Okay, so the next one which is the equivalent to the one that's right next to it, is going to be, say, this guy. And this is going to be blue, light blue, and red. So let's find the light blue and red. Here's a red and gray. So red should be easier for me to visualize. Red, aha, red and light blue. So that's this edge over here. So let's keep track of this. And let's work on putting this in where we want it. Okay, that's going to be here. Okay, red and light blue. Move this into here. 
Okay, so this represents being on the bottom. So we're going to take this, and we're going to roll this red and light blue into here. This is light blue and red over here. So just go one, two, and bang. Light blue and red. Okay, after doing purple and beige, and after doing gray or blue and red, now we're going to hit this one. And this one, if I had to look at the color, that looks like it's beige, and the opposite one is white. So I'm going to look for a beige and white. Here's beige and blue, beige and orange, white and blue. Now, is there such a one or, aha, beige and white, right over here. So what I'm going to do is move this into configuration, which is going to be right over here. And it's upside down because I have to move the beige to, to here. So let's go ahead and turn this upside down. Put it right below where it needs to be, which is right here. And now with this beige and white, I'm going to roll this into here so it's going to match with this and this. One, two. Now if you have a hard time visualizing that, just picture this edge. This edge needs to come up over here. It's not really this edge, as I keep saying, but we pretend like it is. So just roll this into this position and then just kind of check your work. So now what you see is you've got these two beiges that are pointing to this. Uh, you've got the red one over here. So uh, this is in place. And now we're going to do this one. This one is going to be red and purple. So red and purple, and that's going to be the edge that's going to come over to here. So let's find red and purple. Here's a purple, here's a blue, here's a purple here. Aha! Purple and red. This purple and red is going to correlate with this edge over here. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to pay attention to this edge and bring this into here, which is in position, but it's upside down because when I wheel it in, this is going to end up over here. So basically take this edge, turn it upside down. Do whatever you got to do to make that happen. Move this to here, down, just move it back. Purple and red, wheel this into here. Now this edge will pop into here, one, two. Oh, no, two more, there we go, okay. So now this is in, so you see these two reds are pointing to here, and these two purples are pointing into here as well. So what that tells me is that this is in, we take a look at this. This edge is going to be a white and light blue. And that's going to come into here, white and light blue. You can see these are in, that represents this edge and this edge. Now we're putting this one in here. So white and light blue. It's not this one. Okay, here is a white, here's a green, white, aha, and light blue. Okay, so it's this. So this is going to correlate with this edge. So we're going to focus on this edge here. Wherever this edge is moving, these are going to move as well. Okay, and that has to come into uh, over here. So I'm going to move this edge below where it's got to be, which is here. And this light blue is going to end up over here. So picture this edge rolled into here. Now it seems obscure, and it kind of is. This one was so much easier to visualize. It's right in front of you. This, we have to just pay attention to these two colors, which can correlate. Okay, so now this edge is in. Now what I can do is see that as long as these guys are pointing to the white, pointing to the purple, pointing to the blue, pointing to the beige, pointing to the red, and pointing to the white. Okay, that's the equivalent of all these edges in. So believe it or not, this puzzle is exactly like this when it comes to the Mega Mix. All these edges are in here. Whoops. What have I done? What have I done? Got too excited. Okay, this you can visualize the star and you can see it correlate with this. This is more obscure. Instead of a star, you're seeing two, th two fingers pointing to the right center. That's really what you're seeing. But you put it in exactly the same way. Okay, now that you've done that, we put in the corners to finish getting these sides. We don't worry about these pieces because these pieces correlate with these edges. So, so too, it's like you got these edges in, although it's not these edges. These represent the edges. Hopefully that makes sense. To roll the corners in, it's like you do with any uh, 3x3. 
nothing really tricky over here. So this is green, blue, and purple. So look for the blue and purple, which is right up here. So I'm going to take this and just sort of move this down and roll that corner in. Okay, so you can see this is correctly placed. Okay, so that wasn't too hard. That just puts these edges in. This side is now solved. Don't worry about these guys. These represent the edges over here. And this is the same thing. It looks a lot more chaotic, but there is a method to the madness. Now we're gonna do the corners. And the corners are simply the green ones correlated with these colors. So this is gonna be green, red, and white. Right over here, green, red, and white. And I roll them in exactly the same way. This comes down, across, and up. So you can see this and this is in, so this is pretty much reduced. Don't worry about this, because this represents, you guessed it, this edge. It correlates with these two. Okay, find another green. Here's a green. This, this goes in where the purple and blue is. I can look at these. This will tell me where the corner pieces go. So purple and blue. Here's the purple and here's the blue. Therefore, it goes here. So move it down below where it needs to go. R I D I R D. So now this is in, and you can see it's reduced with these. So more green ones right over here. Okay, so this is a purple and white. That's going to be this, this over here, purple and white. So move this down and simply bring it in. Okay, don't let this fool you. That just happened to be there. So this is all in. Good, good, good. And we do more. So this is going to be the light blue and beige, which is here. Light blue and beige. Now as I use this puzzle, it's going to get broken in more. It already is moving much more free. And one more corner. Uh, I'm missing it somewhere. Aha! Down here. Down, across, and up. Okay, so we can see these corners are in. This is likened onto this. There's a lot more noise here, it's true, but this is actually the first side of a megamix, a circle megamix, where this is your corner and these are collectively your edges. And the center, well, we'll say the center is over here. In reality, though, the center is buried in this puzzle. So it's not exactly like a circle megamix because you don't have these pieces that's buried. So the edge is poking through the sides, the center is buried, and this is just the one by one over here. So we don't really need the center because we have these to coordinate us. Okay, the next step in the circle megamix solve is we put these edges in over here. And these are easy, it's the same algorithm as a middle layer of a three by three. Uh, now, you can see this is already in, because this one is in, this is in, and this is where it needs to be over here, so this is in as well. So here's a purple and white, which belongs with these edges over here. So in this puzzle, I have to just rely on these two. But the algorithm for this is I simply put this where it needs to be. This is lined up here, and I'll move this into here, doing UI LI U L U R UI R I. This is in, and that puts these in here as well. You just sort of go around the puzzle and do the same thing. So just as one more example, here's a white and red. Should be easy to spot that right over here. Move it into place. Okay. Oop. So this will come over to here, which will put this green into here. So do the algorithm here. If you, I, again, I assume knowledge on how to solve a mega mix, so now that's in. So as I'm filling that in, this green is going to get filled in as well. Okay, this will get wheeled into here, just placing this green one here. Okay, and finally, that beige and light blue. Oh, it's right here. Okay. So this will wheel into here. 
And we'll find that once we do that, okay. So now that I've put this layer in, you can see this is all done. So what does that look like in this puzzle? Well, what that's going to be is I'm going to turn this over here, so I've got my bottom layer here, and I need to put these edges in. So in reality, it's going to look like these. Now the way that this is going to be easier is just look for any green corner, because you know it's going to be down here somewhere. This is green and pink. So let's find the green and pink, and that's where we're going to put it in. Okay, green and pink. So where is the pink center? Okay, so here's the pink center. So visualize it by using this <clears throat> edge over here. And where this edge is going to go is this edge is going to go right here. So let's move this into here like so. Okay, we're going to wheel this down, but I have to move it to where the green is on the bottom. So this green is going to come down into here. So holding it here, I'm going to roll this edge to here. And I know it's on this side because this green is going to come down to here, and this pink is going to come up to here. So same algorithm to move this whole complex down to here. U, I, L, I, U, L, U, F, U, I, F, I. Okay, now you see that this whole corner is reduced. These are all in. So this is in, and this is where it needs to be over here. Okay, so let's find another green. Here's another green and yellow. So where is the yellow? And it's gonna correlate with any of these centers and here's the yellow over here. So let's take this, and let's move this. And what this is correlating here is this green and yellow that's to this edge here. And this edge is gonna to wanna to go right here. So let's move this in so we can visualize it. So this edge, not really this edge again, it's underneath, but it correlates with this. This is going to come down to here. This yellow will come up to here. So same algorithm. Move it into place. Plug it in. And you'll find it seems to almost magically reduce itself. Green, and this is up here. This accidentally came in. Oh well. Um, and this is all fine here. Okay, so where's another green corner center? Scan around, and right here. Green and blue, that's going to correlate with this edge. And that's going to correlate with coming into here, because here's the blue. So this edge needs to come here, but not like this, because this blue will end up over here. We've got to turn the green, we've got to turn this upside down. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Now that I have this edge upside down, I can move it in. This will be here. This blue will be here. So same algorithm. And we'll see what this looks like. Okay, now this is in. And this is fully reduced. So another green. So you are making short work of this. Okay, here's a green and orange. So that correlates with this edge. Let's move this into place. Okay, so where's the orange center? Let's just wheel this around here. Here's the orange. So this is gonna correlate with this spot. So this green, oh, that's not the right one. Did I lose it? Green and orange, okay, so this edge is gonna go where this is. So let's move it into place. We can see it's at the right orientation. So this edge, these two, is going to end up over here with the orange on top here. Okay. Now if I'm moving fast, that's why I'm doing the entire side so that you can pick it up if you didn't get it the first time. In and down. Okay. So now this, 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 this uh, are in. Now we just need this one over here. And this is going to be green and silver. Well, it's the last green one that's left, so we'll just scout around for it right over here, and it's green and silver. That correlates with this edge, so I'm just going to move this edge around, knowing it's dragging these over here. Okay, and here's the silver, so that's going to correlate with this. I move this into position, and I know this green is going to come down to here, so easy! This is the 3x3 algorithm, this is the middle layer algorithm, and boom. Okay, so 
All these are in, and this is the same as this configuration over here. Again, there's so many extra pieces here, but this actually represents our first side with edges and corners in. Okay, now the next step, uh, once we get these in, is, uh, well, this is the first side, and we also have these edges in. So this is equivalent to all these edges are in. Now again, I have to keep pointing out, it's not these edges, it's underneath. The manifestation of these edges is this piece and this piece. So you're gonna see all these are where they need to be. Okay. Now once you do that, the next step is um, probably the uh, most cumbersome part which is placing these, this triad over here. So we need to place, and actually we'll put this edge here. We need to um, find the center, the edges here, place these edges, and then move the corner in. So just as an example, and the reason why I wanted to do this tandem solve is so that this next step makes sense. Because if you can visualize it, then it won't be so confusing. Uh, so it's gonna be the yellow and white and the purple and yellow. So find a bunch of yellows. Yellow and blue. Yellow and green. Okay, here's a purple and yellow. So what I do is I take this purple and yellow, and I'm just gonna wheel it into, into here. So this comes down, move this like so. Now, I have to bear in mind the super cube aspect of it. I won't have to do that with this puzzle, but let's move this purple up, move this in, and move this down. So you can see this is in. Now let's find the, let me move this back here. Let's find the white and yellow right over here. So this I'm going to move into here. Actually take this, move this up. I can move this yellow into here. And now I've got to move it into this spot over here. So I'm going to take, um, move this up to here so that I can put this in proximity to this piece, move this down like so, and then blast it in. Okay, so that moves these two into place. And the way this is going to work now is I have to put this corner in. So I'm going to look for the yellow, purple, and white edge which is right here. So I'm gonna take this, what we wanna do is we wanna take this corner, move it to the top layer, the one that's just opposite, directly opposite the one that we put in. Let's bump this out of the way, move this down. Now to correlate with these two, is I'm gonna take this one and move it to the top. Now I've got these two next to each other, the corner and this edge next to each other. Then I, I simply take this, I move this in. So I'm taking this edge here, Move this in and bring this corner in over here. If it's not where it needs to be, I move it down a little bit more, move this back, move this up. And I keep doing this until the purple lines up with this purple. And I can see that it lines up. This lines up here too. Now I bring it back. So now this is in conjunction with these two. And I go one, two. So now this corner is in with these two. Now, I might have moved fast with that, but this is Megaminx solve strategy. Specifically, Supercube Megaminx solve strategy. Just to do one more to illustrate, we'll go ahead and put these back in. So let's do the white and blue, and the white and red. Uh, I'm sorry, the blue and red. So let's find, here's a blue and white. So let's move this up, cross and back. So this is gonna be rolled into here. So let's coordinate that. Uh, so, okay, so this blue has to come into a blue from here somewhere, and that's going to be, no. Okay, well, so we're going to move the white one. This white one will come up to here, splat. I'll match this white to here, and then this blue will meet this blue down here. Boom. And this will turn back, so we're okay. So this is in. I gotta get, so this accidentally was placed. So um, I gotta get the blue and red. 
blue and, aha, right over here. So blue and red, it's not coordinated the same, the proper place. So I gotta put it into here. So let's move this up, take it out, and move this back down. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna move this up, turn it in. Well, actually what I'm gonna have to do is take this red and move it up to the top to join this red. One, two. Move it in to join the red here. Then one, two to move it down. Okay, so both of these are in. Take this corner, move it to the top. And now we're gonna take uh, this one. Move this to the top. And then I simply roll, th roll this into here until this white matches this spot here. So move it out of the way, move this down. Doesn't correlate with that, move it back. Move this back up just in case I put these in. Put this up here, move it down, bring it back, move it up. I'm just gonna keep doing that until this red and blue, this red and blue matches this. Turn it around here, bring it in. Okay, not yet. This is equivalent to R-I-D-A-R-B, so you can see these guys correlate now. Move this in. So now these are all in, and boom. And the key here is to do this all around the puzzle until I get all these guys in over here. So with that demonstrated, how am I gonna make this work with this, with this guy? Well, we know we've got these all in, so it's gonna be these guys over here. So how, how, am I, how am I gonna put those in? Well, the corner's here, but I need to put these edges in. So I need to put this one in, and I need to put this one in. So I'll know what, what those are based on the colors here. So this is beige and blue. So the first thing to do is let's find this edge, which is the beige and blue. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of searching around. Here's blue, is it light blue? Nope, it's dark blue. So it should take to the eyes pretty well. Aha, so here's beige and blue. That correlates with this edge here. Again, not this one, but the one under that. So let's go ahead and see if we can't roll this into position. Okay, so this has to go where this is. So I can just wheel this in, boom. So you can see beige and blue. I don't have to be so particular about the center because it ain't got none. So beige and blue. The next thing that I have to put in, so I put this in, now I gotta put this one in, and that's gonna be red and gray. So red and gray, looking for red and gray. And again, I have to keep my wits about me, keep my perspective about me. I put this in, now I gotta put this one in. I put the, um, actually I already put this, uh, this one in, I gotta put this one in. That's gonna be red and gray. So let's find the red and gray. I'll keep my hand here to know where I'm going. Here's a red and gray right over here. So I'm gonna move this to here. It's gonna be equivalent to this. This needs to move into this side over here. So I'm gonna correlate that with this edge. Put it like so. Put it in like thus, okay? So I put this one in and this one in. You can see this is the red here and the gray here. So to reiterate, I put this one in by matching the beige and the blue. I put this one in by matching the red and the gray. Now I just have to move this one in, the corner in. So the corner is gonna be red, beige, and pink. And it's gonna reduce this whole thing over here. This is already reduced when I put this one in. So red, beige, and pink. Should be a little easier to find. Right over here, red, beige, and pink. Let's move this up to the top like we did. Bump it out of the way. I always move back what I do, just in case I put something else in. Okay, so that's gonna come over to here. So the, this is gonna work, let's move it to the side. And we're gonna be moving this up. Um, it's gonna be the equivalent to say, this edge. This is these uh, this cor correlation over here. So I'm gonna go one, two. So it's gonna to have to correlate with this beige. So I'm gonna roll this into here. Go R I D I R D. Now you can see this is not correlated yet. So move this out. This doesn't turn. Move it back. And I just keep 
rolling it in in that way until this lines up, which it does, and move it back. You'll find this lines up, and now we simply move it down splat. Okay, so this is in. Um, again, you can't tell with these edges, but you can tell with this. In, in, and in, and that's reduced. So the next one I move to here, and it's the same thing. If we were to put this one in, that's going to be the blue and the pink, and we got lucky. It's already in. That's already there. This one is going to be the green and, what do you got there, orange? Yep, orange. Okay. So find the green and orange. What kind of green is that? Is that a light green? Nope, sorry, not green, not green at all. It's going to be the beige and orange. So beige and orange, orange and beige. Okay, so it's right here. So this is going to correlate with what would be this slot, and that's going to come into this spot over here. So let's move this to here. We can see it's it's a little bit upside down, because when it comes down here, we want, we want the beige. Now, a quick way to turn this upside down is just do a quick algorithm that you do on the last layer. I want this to be turned upside down, so F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. Okay, that puts it here, beige and orange. So now this is ready to go where it needs to go. Over here, beige and orange. So that's this edge here. And this edge wants to go here. Yeah, right here. So this edge wants to go here. So we're going to correlate it with that, and we know that the beige is going to be orange and beige. Okay, right here. So we got to move this to here. So let's move this up. Move this down. Move this across. Okay. So this is where it needs to be, and this is where it needs to be. That correlates with this, and that correlates with this. So this, oh, actually, okay, this rather. So this correlates with here and here, which is good. This correlates with here and here. Okay, so these edges are in. Now we have to roll this one in, and that's going to be the beige, blue, and gray. I don't know where I got that from. Beige, blue, and gray, right over here. Okay, so it's already on the top layer. So what I have to do is move this up. I'm going to move this beige one up to the top. One, two. Now I've just got to correlate this piece with this over here. Okay, so I'm going to move up, down, across, back. You can see this is not in quite yet. The beige has to be up here. Up, across, back, and up. And roll it in again. And you can see, not quite. Okay, actually I'm correlating it with this blue over here. So you can see, now the blue is in. Bring this up and now this is in. And bring it down. Okay, so now this is fully reduced. Again, this is the one that's going to be the hardest to, uh, um, to correlate. So this I know is in because they're all reduced. This I know is in because these are all reduced. Now I'm going to go over to here. First thing to do is we put these edges in. So this one is going to be, if we were to try this one first, this is going to be purple and gray. So here's a purple, but that's not purple and gray. And that's going to be going into this spot here. Well, this spot here. So purple and gray, that's not this. Here's gray. It should get easier and easier to find. Nope. Right over here, purple and gray. So let's move this. Let's move this guy up over here. Move him up over here. I'm not taking any of these guys out. Purple and gray. So that correlates with this uh, alleged edge. And we're trying to get that to where? We're trying to get that to here. So this 
needs to be in this spot. Uh, but it's upside down here, so we have to turn this upside down. One, two, okay. So purple is in here, gray is in here, and that correlates with this. So purple and gray. Now we have to put the equivalent to this here, and that's gonna be blue and yellow. I always look here to make sure I didn't disrupt anything, and I didn't, these are still reduced, still reduced. So blue and yellow. Aha, light blue and yellow. That correlates with this edge over here. So just to rehash, this light blue and yellow, here's the yellow, here's the light blue. So that's gonna come into here. So this has to come into here, and it's gotta correlate with these guys here, which correlates with this. So let's go ahead and move this up to here. And we basically want this to be in this spot. But let's correlate that with, with, with this. So I'm gonna pretend like this is the edge and it's gotta get, and this has to get into this space here. So I'm gonna move this up here, move this edge into this space as a surrogate edge, and move it back. So as we look at this, we see that the blue is here and this yellow is here, which correlates with this edge. And this is the pink over here. Whoop, this edge, I'm sorry. This is the silver over here and the purple over here. Okay, that tells me that these two are in. And again, it's hard to visualize these guys lining up with these guys. So my surrogate is put these two edges together, which will put these two together here. Okay, now we're looking for the blue, purple, and orange corner. Nothing there. Right over here. So let's move this to the top. Okay, blue, purple, and orange. And move this to the side here. Now we're going to move the equivalent to this edge up to here. That's going to be these two. So I'm going to go one, two. I got this edge over here. I'm going to correlate this with this color here. So I'm going to move this in. Move this corner into this spot. You can see it correlates. And then move it back. So we know that it's in. It correlates. Now if it didn't, I just keep going around and around. And boom. Okay. So now this is in, ignore this. I know it got reduced, but that was an accident. So this is good. So basically we have this in, this in. Oh, okay, this was taken out, and this in. So this, this, and this. Okay, we have two more. So let's see, if it wasn't clear before, let's see if I can hopefully make it more clear. I need to put the equivalent of this edge, which is gonna be this color, which is white, and orange. So we're gonna find the white and orange and we're gonna find the proxy edge that belongs between those two and just put that in here. So white and orange, here's white, nope, white and pink, nope, white and orange right here, white and orange. So I'm gonna focus on this edge as though this were the edge I was looking for, just so that I, I don't get lost. And where I wanna put this is I need to put this here right over here. So let's move this this edge, my proxy edge up here. I'm pretending like this is the edge, although it's this is the actual edge here. And I want this edge to go into this spot. And that's where I'm gonna put it. Move this here, and this edge will go into this spot, one, two. Now is it upside down? Nope, because I got the white one here, and I got the orange one here. So now I'm gonna look for the proxy edge that goes here, which is actually these colors here, and that's gonna be purple and blue. So the purple and blue edge is gonna go here, or the two that are purple and uh, blue, that's whatever edge is here is gonna come into this spot. So purple and blue, here's purple and blue. Okay, that's this edge over here. It's not the real edge, but we're gonna use it as though it is. So just so I can visualize it. So this edge is gonna go into this spot over here. And I correlate that with this. So I'm gonna move it next to this edge. So this edge needs to go into here. So I'm gonna move this up like so. Now notice I'm taking this edge out, but that's okay. This isn't the real edge. So I'm just gonna move this into here and then move it down. 
And then we can see by putting this edge in, this purple is here, this blue is here. So these are my proxy edges, but in reality, I put this in and this in, this in and this in, and these are the same ones. So my corner is going to be purple, white, and yellow. Purple, white, and yellow. Where are you? Yep, right here. Okay. Purple, white, and yellow. And that's going to be sliding into here. So let's move it to the side. Now I'm going to take the equivalent of this edge, which is actually these colors here, and when I move this to the top, this edge to the top, that's going to correlate with this color here. This color has to match with this white over here. So you know how we do RIDARD, we're just going to move this top one here, so I put an FI, then an LI, F or an L. Okay. So you can see this is rotated wrong. I have to get this white in this spot. So let's take it out. So we're going to move this up like so. Move this away from it. Move it back. And move this back up here. Okay. Now we're going to correlate that again. So I guess we can call this an R and a U if I were to do that. That's going to be an R. R, U, I, R, I, U. You can see this does correlate now, as does this. And I wheel it down. So now this is in. So I know that all the edges and corners are correct when this is reduced. So we've got this reduced, this reduced. Yep. Um, something may have been taken out. Yeah, this was taken out here. Okay. This is reduced. This is reduced. We just have this one to go. Okay, so see if you can follow this here. Remember, when we put this in, we had to get these two in and then get the corner in. So, so too we have to get the equivalent of these two in. This correlates with these guys, so that's going to be red and yellow. Okay, red and yellow. Here it is, red and yellow. Okay, so I see the red and yellow. This is the edge that I'm going to visualize as what the edge is when it actually isn't. So this edge has to go where this is, and that correlates with the red and yellow. So let's just take this and move this into this spot, this into this spot. When I do that, I can see that, oh, it's upside down. So let's move this back up. Let's turn this upside down. The algorithm to turn this edge upside down, F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. And we'll find that the red and yellow here is now upside down. That's correlated with this edge. Move this into this spot. Okay, so we pretend like this edge is in, and it actually is because this is in and this is in. This doesn't correlate. I mean, it correlates, but it's not the real edge. Next, we'll do the one that's in this spot, which is actually white and pink. So we find the white and pink and find which edge is in between those. Here's a pink, here's a white, it's this edge. So this needs to go into this spot. And that's how we visualize it. So put this into this spot. Now the problem is that if I do that, this is going to be upside... No, is it? No, okay. Well, it might be upside down. Red and yellow. Actually, this is white and pink. Oh yeah, right over here. Okay, so white and pink. White and pink correlates with this, and that correlates with this, so this needs to go in this spot over here. But I think this needs to be upside down because this white has to come into this spot. So let's turn this edge upside down. F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. It's just last layer algorithm. Okay, so here's the white and pink. This edge can now go into this spot here, which is actually these two here. Okay, so let's move this up. Bring this edge into the position here. Oh, okay. I actually turned it upside down when I shouldn't have. So let's turn this right side up again. F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. Okay. So this is the circuit edge. That's going to go into this spot here, this edge over here. So move this up by two. 
bring this in, which puts this into position. One, two. Okay, so this is in and this is in. So this edge is in, or the equivalent, because you can see yellow and red. This edge is in. Oop. Now we needed white. Oh, nope, I got, I got a little lost. Okay, so this edge is in. Now we need this edge in, and that's white and pink. Okay, so these two are the equivalent of being in. So now I need the corner that's white, blue. Oh, you know, this one is not in. Oh, here it is. White, red, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Let's see if I should be able to easily spot that right over here. Move this up and down. Okay, red, white, and blue. Move this to the top, move it to the side. Now we're gonna correlate it with this edge. So in reality, we're correlating it with these colors here. So I'm gonna move this up here, one, two. This is the color that we wanna correlate with this. So we roll it in, if this is uh, now our new R, and this is now our new up. So we go R, U, R, I, U, I. You can see that the colors don't coordinate, so we do it again. R, U, R, I, U, I. And then roll it in again. R, U, R, I, U, I. And we keep doing that until this red correlates, this white correlates. Now we're just going to move the blue down and splat. Okay, so what we have now is this is in, this is in, this is in, and this is in. So we have the equivalent of all of these guys being in. I don't have them all in here as of yet, but that's what that correlates with. Okay, so this puzzle currently is the equivalent of this. So this, all these are in, these two edges in this corner. So too with this, I can tell that these edges are in because these all correlate. They're all perfectly reduced. These are the edges, this is the corner. So two edges in a corner, two edges in a corner. And these, these are in over here. This is automatically going to be in because it's correlative with this edge, which is correlative with this. So really, um, yeah, what we're seeing is this corner is, sur is surrounded by edges that are reduced. So too, this corner is surrounded by edges that are reduced. Okay, now the next part is the easiest part of the solve, and that's rolling these corners in. And that's really easy, because you're going to take it from the top end or wherever it is. So we're looking for the pink, silver, and orange. It's here. So I'm just going to move this to the top, put it just above where it's supposed to be, and just keep doing our R, U, R, I, U, I. You can see it's upside down. So we're just going to keep rolling it in like that. With R, U, R, I, U, I. And it's in. So then we move to the next one, which is uh, this guy. And that's going to be an orange, silver, and blue. Uh, right over here. So we're just going to kind of roll that in and you should kind of get the hang of how to roll corners in. Again, it's sort of basic technique, so I'm going to assume knowledge on how to do that. So that's in and just all around the puzzle. Correlate with this one here. Just roll this one in here like so. Roll this white one in like thus. Okay, whoop, one more. It's the only other red one that's here. Up, across, and down. Okay, so upon doing that, this is all in. Notice these aren't in, but that's okay. That correlates with these edges here. So let's roll that in over here. That's the equivalent to these corners here. Now this one's already in, so this is going to be the... Um, now, what might seem confusing is it might seem these edges aren't in, but this is not the edges we're speaking of, it's these. So as long as these are reduced, these edges are in. So we're going to be going for these corners. So this one is in. This is going to be the uh, red, pink, and blue. So let's look for red, pink, and blue, and it's right over here. So we're just going to keep doing the R, 
U R I U I. Now you see it's not in, so I'm just going to take a couple shortcuts and just keep rolling it until I get it correlative with its proper position. So the reds are in, so splat. Okay, so this is correct. Don't worry that this isn't in yet because we haven't put this edge in yet, but these will be in. So all these will be in over here. It'll be reduced. So this is the beige, pink, and gray side, correlative with these. So here's beige, pink, and gray. So I'm going to move it up, put the corner in. I can see it's not where it needs to be yet. So it's just a matter of rolling it in, not where it needs to be yet. Now rotate it correctly yet. In, down. Okay, so that's in. Next is the blue, orange, and gray. Oh, right here. Okay, I can see the blues line up. This comes down. Fully reduced. Well, reduced. Not fully reduced, but that's okay. This is from that edge here. And now we just have this one to go. This is purple. The last one with purple in it. Right here. Move it up. Move the purple one in, move it down. Okay, so these edges are in, and that all uh, that all should be fine. To put these in, it's the same algorithm that I did with these edges. It's sort of a recrudescence of that. So let's find some edges that I can put in. So this is a silver and pink. This will come down here. Now note this yellow will now be here, or this beige rather, and this green will be up here. So it's the same Rubik's Cube um, algorithm. U I R I, I'm sorry, L. Uh, let's try that again. Mm -hmm. U I L I U L U F U I F I. Pops that in. This is now one over here. Okay. This can go over to here. So this is another easy part of the solve. Pops that into here. It's a nice little break. This is going to pop into here. And understand that I'm using this one, these edges to guide me. But I'm going to have to use these two when it comes to this guy over here. So, so now these are in and it just leaves us with the last layer. So to correlate that over here, green is on the bottom, we have to put these edges in, which is actually these over here. Uh, this one uh, should be fairly easy to spot, so we can look at some random ones over here. They're all going to be on this side. And the ones that are going to correlate are if this is dark green here, this center is light green. So find all the ones that are light green, and that's where it's going to have to go. So this is going to go where the blue one is. So wheel it around. Where is the light blue? It's right here. So this edge, if I put it in here, is going to take this blue and put that down over here. So if you can visualize that, again, we're not trying to put this particular edge in here. We're trying to put these edges in here. I'm just visualizing it knowing that this is the position that it's in, so I'm just going to move it in as I would. So that's U I L I U L U F U I F I. So now this is in and this is up here. Find another green. Here's a green and red. Find where the red center is, and it's right over here. So if I move it to here, this is going to move down to here, which means this edge comes down to here, so this whole thing can go here. U R U I R I U I F I U F. This red is here. Find another light green right over here, which correlates with the white. So we find the white, which is down here. Move this in position so that this white can pop into here and do the algorithm. So no problem. So you're not really reducing these corner center circle areas. You're simply solving the Megaminx edges. Okay, another green. Green, green right over here. This is beige. Find the beige center down here, right here. Okay, so now this whole thing this edge is going to move down to here. Pretending like this edge is going to go into this position, which is the same as these two, going into this position. U R U I R I U I F I U 
F. Okay, any more greens? And yep, this one here goes to where the purple is. Find the purple area, which is right here. So this is equivalent to this edge, which is equivalent to coming to this spot. So this can be where it needs to be here. U, R. All right, some circles are a little more sticky than others. And down, okay. Uh, so we know we have it in if all these corner centers are where they need to be. And you can see all these corner centers are where they need to be too. So now we have the equivalent to the last layer, which is equivalent to this. So the way this is gonna work is we have to look to see what's upside down and what's right side up. Now there's no parity problems with this. So um, let's make sure I've got all these in and I do. And I see that this is right side up and all these are upside down. So we want to flip these edges. By flipping these edges, it means we're flipping these over here. Um, I'll hold it in this position and we do the algorithm F R U R I U I F I. Right, so um, if you see three that are up next to each other, hold them so that they're to the side here. So this is not rotated correctly. This is the equivalent to the L formation where it comes, um, instead of an L, it has this pattern. F R U R I U I F I. What I'm looking for is something that looks like this arrow. This is like the line of a Rubik's Cube. When I see that again, I hold it toward the two that are right side up is on the left, and the one that's right side up to the right, and I do F R U R I U I F I. Now, so these are all rotated, and that's easy to visualize. But here, maybe not so much. How do I know it's right side up and how do I know it's upside down? Well, I have to line these up and see where they correlate with. So this is a yellow and silver. If I move this to here, this yellow lines up, the silver lines up. This is right side up. So this edge, I'm gonna say this, is, this equivalent edge is right side up. Okay, the next edge is here. Is this right side up? Well, this is orange and this is pink. Is this pink in here? Looks like that's blue. Oh, well, yeah. So that's blue. So no. Um, this orange and pink correlates with this. Right over here. So you can see, um, so I'm really correlating this edge. I know this edge is right side up. This one, if I move this in where it's supposed to be, here, you can see it's upside down. This orange is where the pink is, this pink is where the orange is. Let's move this back here. So, I know this is upside down. So right side up, upside down. What about you? Well, this is blue and silver. Now, does that correlate? Well, here's blue and here's silver. If this blue moved here, the silver would move here, would move here. So this edge is right side up. So we've got Right side up, this guy was upside down. This is right side up. And this one, so this one is also right side up. So these two are right side up, and this is right side up. This is like the line, right over, this is like the arrow. So if I do the algorithm here, it will correlate. Right side up, uh, right side up. So that's two on the left, one on the right. And it's really just a matter of looking at it and keeping track of what's upside down and what's right side up. So we do the same algorithm. F R U R I U I F I. Now we can check our work, but all of these should be right side up. Once it's right side up, then it's a matter of moving them in the right spot. And this is where things can, once again, you have to skew your perspective. Here, I look for the two that correlate. I can actually put these in the right place. If I don't see anything that correlates, I do a SUNY, and what the SUNY is, that's the RU, RUR, 3URI for the uh, dodecahedron, is that's gonna keep this the same, uh, this the same, and this the same. So I need to get one outer and one inner that's, uh, that's in. So I'm just gonna do it randomly. R U R I U R 3U, not 2U, but 3U, R I. 
Any of that's in? Nope, not yet, so we do it again. For you, R I. Okay, so so this is in. This is in over here. So now I want to move another one in. When I do that, this is going to stay the same. So this is going to stay out. I need to move the blue one into here. So if I do it enough times, this will be in. Then I'll move it over here because they're both going to be in. So this is in. This will stay out. I have to move the correct one into here, and that's going to be this guy. So R U R I U R one two three U R I. Okay, not in yet. It's here. Got to get it here. R U R I U R three U R I. So this is in, and this is in. And this algorithm kept this the same and kept this the same. So I'm going to move this here. It'll keep this the same and this the same and roll these guys in. R, U, R, I, U, R, 3, U, R, I. So now, whoop, not yet. Almost. 1, 2, 3, U, R, I, and boom. So good, 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 good. So all these have been reduced. These edges are in. And once you do that, you can see that all these circles are now filled. So how do I do that with this guy? So this is our last layer over here. And it's really just a matter of moving the edges in. So I have to have two edges that are the same. I can tell that two edges are the same by if these guys line up. So these two and these two. So let's move this into its proper center. Okay, so this represents this edge, and you can see this blue lines up with this, this orange lines up with this. Is this one in? Well, this silver does not line up, so the answer is no. How about this one? Uh, this uh, doesn't line up, and this doesn't line up. So I'm going to keep this here, and I'm going to SUNY it with this in front of me until I get any one of these two that are in. Are, now, when I do this, uh, SUNY is going to hold this one the same, and this one the same. Uh, 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 this one the same, and this one the same. This and this are, are going to be fixed, so this will be fixed. So will this, so I'm going to need to get this one in, so these two. R, U, R, I, U, R, 3, U, R, I. Just to confirm, this hasn't changed, right? But I have to see if this has. Now this is in, and this is in. What that tells me is that this equivalent edge is in and this equivalent edge is in. So I move it over here so that this is in front of me, this is to the side. And then doing the SUNY as many times as I need will get all these where they, sh where they should be, all these edges in. R, U, R, I, U, R, 1, 2, 3, U, R, I. I know it's not in yet because I'm waiting for the blue to end up here, which will tell me that this is in. R, U, R, I, U, Ooh, looking good, R, 3, U, R, I, aha, so this is in, whoops, these are all in, these are all good, so by putting the equivalent edges in here, I actually put these in, so this is equivalent to this situation, I've got pretty much all of my circle Megaminx pieces in. These are extra pieces. These are different pieces. So now the last part is getting the corners in. To find the corners, we see which ones are in and which ones aren't. This is in, and it's the only one. Now what this algorithm will do is it'll keep this fixed and this fixed, as opposed to this edge and this edge, this and this. So what I need to do is I need to move another one next to here, and that's going to be the blue and pink. But if this is fixed, this won't move. So uh, what I have to do is I have to blast this one out of here to move this into here. So I'm going to move it in this position. This will stay where it is, but that'll blast this out, keep these two here. And the algorithm for this is 2UR, 2UI, LI, 2URI, 2UI, LI. Okay. Now this is interesting because that put this in place. So this is where it needs to be. But I was actually focused on, on this guy over here. So this is in. 
What I want to do is keep moving it around until I put the proper piece into here. Oh, I'm sorry, proper piece into here. And that's going to be this to here. So this will be fixed and this will be fixed. To U R, to U I L I, to U R I, to U I L. And we can see that it's not in yet. Okay, once more should get this in here. To U R, to U L I. Turn, 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 and turn. Okay, so we can see they're all, uh, these two are in. Hold it over here. It'll hold these two constant, and these will rotate until they're, they're in. So to U, R, to U, L, I, to U, R, I, and splat. Okay, so now they're all in. These just have to be rotated. The way you do that is just like with the last layer of a 3x3, three three, you do R, I, D, I. R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D. And you keep doing that until the green piece is in. Then roll this over here. And then congratulations. You solved your circle Megamix. This one, same thing. Now this one should be easier. So which one is in and which one isn't? If none of them are in, which it appears, we go ahead and do that algorithm. To U R to U I L I to U R I to U I L. Now we take a look. Anything in? Aha! This one. Um, so I want to move this one in place, and I can see it's not there. Or I want to move this one in place. Uh, I can move this into here. So, to U, R, to U, I, L, I, to U, R, I, to U, I, L. Okay, so these two are in. Hold it over here. These will be fixed, and then we'll roll these guys in. To U, R, to U, I, L, I, to U, R, I, to U, I, L. Are we there? Yeah, we're there. So now we just do R I D R D until these are all rotate. Do until all the green ones are on the top. R I D I R D R I D I R D. So this is in. This is already in. So skip past this. Move this into place and keep rolling it in. D, R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D, and then just roll this back. Okay, so this is a quote to this. What you've done is you've done your circle megaming solve, and what that really means is all of these are reduced, all of these corners. It looks like we did a kilomink solve. A circle kilomink solve, but in reality, we did a circle megamink solve, which means all these which represent the edges and these that represent the corners, the centers are hidden in here. These edges are not the true edges, but that's the first part of the solve. These are all reduced. The next part is simply do the crystal pyraminx part, which are these guys over here.